When I was quite young, I was under the impression that most, if not all, dogs were boys and most, if not all, cats were girls. And this kind of bled over into my assumptions when I adopted our first cat, who was Wessie. I kind of assumed that we would get a female cat for whatever reason. And adopting a male cat, as it turned out, has really been the primary experience of cat ownership in my life. I have spent most of my life with a male cat in the house. And so in this video, I want to share some interesting facts about our male cats who do in fact make up about 50% of the feline population uh, and explore some of the fascinating things that make them special. So first off, when we're talking about male cats or female cats, you can't uh, set aside the fact that these cats roll reproductively kind of colors their life in nature. So a male cat who has not been neutered is going to reach puberty somewhere between five and seven months of age. And from that point, his life is again going to be shaped by his desire to find a mate. These cats are going to spend their time either outside or wanting to be outside. They're going to constantly be looking for female cats and they're going to be kind of territorial and competitive with other male cats in the community. And so these cats are going to end up getting into a lot of fights and they're going to be territorial in various other ways. So you're going to notice that these cats tend to uh, urinate on things to mark their territory. They tend to be uh, more aggressive with scratching in certain places. They're going to do everything they can to mark their territory and keep competing male cats from getting on their turf. The changes surrounding puberty affect them physically as well, so they have higher levels of testosterone than they did before, and of course then female cats. This is going to affect a lot of different things in their body, including the thickness of their cheek skin. So you'll often notice that tom cats or unneutered male cats will have these distinctively chubby cheeks. This comes from a combination of the increased testosterone making their cheek skin thicker, which helps to protect them from fights, and then it also is affected by the scar tissue that they tend to get during these fights. So a male cat who's getting into a lot of fights and has a lot of testosterone could have a really, really big big fat face. Just one of the ways that you can identify a tomcat when you're out and about. Now you might be thinking that uh, since the drive to reproduce is such a critical part of a non-neutered male cat's life, whether or not they are active dads. And the answer to this is no. They're really not so much focused on the kitten part of it as they are just on finding those female cats. And all in all, the hormones and behavioral traits that come along with being an adult male cat tend to make these cats um, less suitable to human cohabitation. So they tend to do a lot of spraying, urine marking, they tend to be a little bit more aggressive, they tend to really want to be outside, which can be a problem for some people. Um, they're uh, there's just this distinctive set of traits that can make them kind of hard to live with for us. But if you're watching this video, chances are your male cat will have none of these experiences. They've probably been neutered at an early age. And so this is going to take away many of those hormonal and habitual factors that make tomcats or non-neutered male cats so distinct. However, there are a number of things that make male cats special regardless of whether or not they have been neutered. So let's dive into some of those. My first interesting fact is that about 80% of all orange cats are male. It is much more likely that you will have an orange male cat than an orange female cat. And this comes down to the fact that the color genes are sex linked. Given that male cats have one X and one Y chromosome and don't experience X inactivation, which causes kind of mosaic of colors across the coat, they're unable to form into tortoiseshell or calico cats. And so all of the cats that would be tortoiseshell or calico, if they had the opportunity to with those two X chromosomes, will end up being orange. And so uh, what happens is that you end up having far more orange cats uh, who are male than female. And then jumping off from that point about uh, color genes and the sex chromosomes, the fact that male cats have only one X and one Y chromosome means that they will almost never be tortoise shell. So if you see a cat who has both black and orange in their coat, that cat is almost definitely female. 
There is one exception to this, and it occurs in about one in every 3,000 births of a tortoiseshell cat. And it is a cat who has two copies of the X chromosome, as well as a Y chromosome. Generally, we can refer to them as a male tortoiseshell cat. Again, very, very rare, and these cats are infertile, and so they aren't you know, passing this down to future generations. My third fact is that because they have a longer urethra, male cats are significantly more likely than female cats to experience urethral blockages. And this is when a combination of materials build up in the urethra and obstruct it, making the cat unable to pee. While female cats can also develop urinary tract issues like cystitis, uh, infections, crystals, they almost never get fully blocked. And it is so common among male cats versus females that some vets will even refer to it as blocked tom. It is a predominantly male condition. It can become deadly in about 24 hours. So if you notice that your male cat is straining in the litter box, they don't seem like they can pee, uh, you need to bring that cat to a vet and get immediate treatment. It's also another reason why I think in male cats especially, it's critical to focus on good hydration and a species appropriate diet. You want that cat to be able to flush everything through their urethra. You don't want there to be any buildup. And good hydration seems to be one of the strongest ways to deal with that, along with an appropriate dietary pH and other factors. My fourth fact is that compared to female cats, male cats tend to exhibit a left paw preference. We could certainly use more research on this, but there was a study in 1990 that looked at the paw preference of 66 different cats, seeing whether they prefer to use their right or their left paw or both. Overall, across both male and female cats, they tended to exhibit a right paw preference, but it was more pronounced in the female cats. So just over 50% of the female cats preferred to use their right paw and only about 33% liked using their left paw. Things were a little bit more evenly distributed among the male cats. So it seems that overall male cats have a little bit less of a right paw preference than do the female cats. My next fact is that while male cats and female cats generally look the same, the male cats tend to be a little bit bigger than the females. Again, this tends to vary more by breed and by other genetic factors than sex alone. The males tend to be a little bit heavier and a little bit longer than the female cats. Interestingly, this is more pronounced seemingly in orange cats than cats of other colors. So the difference between an orange male cat and an orange female cat is going to be likely more pronounced than the difference between a black uh, male and a black female cat. Curious. Now on a bit of a more worrying note, male cats tend to live shorter lives than females. And this seems to be the case even when the cats have been neutered. There was a review done in 2013 that looked at large cat populations and looked at their life spans. And what they found was that on average, the male cats who were neutered lived about one year shorter than their spayed female counterparts. So it seems that even when you account for spaying and neutering, the male cats are living shorter lives. Now, I'm not entirely sure why this might be. If you have any ideas, please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear about it. However, this is not to say that spaying and neutering doesn't have a really big impact on lifespan. So male cats get a bigger benefit from being neutered than female cats do from being spayed for all of the reasons that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, they tend to get about four years added to their lifespan. A neutered male cat will live for on average about 11.8 years, where an unneutered male cat will only live for about seven and a half years. Now this doesn't account for whether or not the cats are living outside, but it does say a lot about the effect of neutering on that cat generally speaking. Interestingly, there's a similar effect in humans where eunuchs or people who have been castrated tend to live longer than men who did not undergo that. So there definitely seems to be a longevity benefit to having your cat neutered in addition to all of the other kind of human-centric benefits there. My last fact is that there is kind of a stereotype of the male cat personality and that goes beyond that kind of rough and tumble tomcat stereotype. I've noticed a lot of people reporting that their male cats are more affectionate and cuddly than their female cats. This is reflected in survey data, looking at cat owners with different colors and sexes of cats. Consistently, the male cats tend to be rated as more 
loving and more affectionate and less intolerant than female cats. It kind of maps out with color. So the predominantly male color orange tends to be rated as more friendly, while the predominantly female color tortoise shell tends to be rated as a little bit more temperamental. Is there any validity to this? Well, it seems there may be. So when you look at cats living in a more natural environment, living around a cat colony, for instance, in a feral landscape, you're going to see that the male cats tend to live on the periphery of the colony instead of hanging out with their family, and they tend to do a lot of roaming, and perhaps this makes them more outgoing and more confident. It may be that the more successful male cats are those who use these strategies to survive in that type of environment. So it's entirely possible that there is some valid personality difference between male cats and female cats that will lead them to kind of come across as a little bit more loving. Now, this doesn't really apply if your cat has not been neutered. In that case, the cat is going to be off doing their own thing. You're not going to really experience that kind of snuggly laid back feeling from that cat. But having the cat neutered seems to kind of unveil that. With that said, I would love to hear your personal experience with this. Have your male cats and your female cats had different personalities on the whole? Do you think that there's any validity to this stereotype about the male personality? It's purely anecdote, um, but let's contribute to the anecdotes. I would love to hear uh, your personal views on this. As for me, I have loved having a male cat um, in my home and I do feel like I perceive these differences between uh, Forrest and Wessie, but it it's really hard to say where all of that is coming from. I think they just have their own special personalities and it's really hard to break down exactly what is causing that. But I, I really appreciate having both of them in my life. I'm certainly glad that I've gotten to experience both. I'll look forward to reading about your experiences in the comments. Thank you so much. Bye.